Hello Brain Shakers, welcome to the Brain Shakers Academy, Brave Alice Days here. Now we continue looking at the female pelvis and if I say we continue, it means that I have done a number of videos on the female pelvis and I would like you to check them out on my YouTube channel which is Brain Shakers Academy. So today we're going to be looking at the pelvic brim, the cavity and then look at the outlet as well. Now let's quickly get into today's session and understand those three. Okay, so the pelvic brim, the pelvic cavity, and the pelvic outlet are very important uh, parts of the pelvis uh, for you to understand and know. Why? Because the fetus is going to go through these three for it to then be delivered and be called a baby. Now, let's begin with the pelvic brim. But before we look at the pelvic brim, we need to understand that there are three main types of diameters that we're going Going to be looking at and understanding today. So we have what we refer to as the anteroposterior diameter. And number two, we have what we call the oblique diameter. Number three, we're going to have what we call the transverse diameter okay so if we had the pelvic brim here basically the line that we have drawn here as we were looking at the landmarks this is exactly rep replicated here so this will be the posterior aspect of this pelvis and this will be the anterior aspect of the pelvis so when we're talking about anterior posterior it means anterior to the posterior from here to here that will be our ap diameter and oblique diameter it means that from here to here then we have another diameter here. So this is going to be our oblique diameter. We can also have another oblique diameter from here to here, moving like that. So this will also be our oblique diameter. Then when we're looking at the transverse diameter, then we're looking at moving from point A to point B in that direction. And so we end up with our transverse diameter. So basically these are the three main diameters that we will look at under the pelvic brim, the pelvic cavity and the pelvic outlet. Now let's quickly look at the pelvic brim. So the pelvic brim already discussed from our uh, video on the pelvic landmarks it is an important uh, structure of the pelvis or part of the pelvis as it helps us uh, differentiate between the true pelvis and the false pelvis meaning that everything above those landmarks becomes part of the false pelvis and anything beneath it is going to be part of the true pelvis now the pelvic brim has diameters that we're going to refer to as an anterior posterior diameter that is basically measuring from the uh, upper border of the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory and we're also going to have oblique diameters and then the um, transverse diameter now let's look at the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvic brim so the pelvic brim has three subdivisions of anterior posterior diameters and we call them conjugates Okay, so they are called conjugates. Okay, so what, we, what is happening basically is we have the sacral promontory here. Okay, and then you have the symphysis uh, pubis on the other end. So we are measuring from the upper border here, coming all the way to the sacral promontory. So this is an anterior posterior diameter. We're moving from here to the posterior, anterior posterior diameter. And so we've said that we have three and we call them conjugates. The first one, which is from the upper border of the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory, this one is what we are going to call an anatomy anatomical conjugates okay that will be an anatomical conjugate so the first one here you have is an, an anatomical conjugate then you have an obstetric conjugate so 
again back to the symphysis pubis just in the middle part of the symphysis pubis so the symphysis pubis doesn't appear this straight it appears a little bit more like that a little bit deviated inside as well just as the sacral promontory so we are going a little bit lower than the uh, anatomical conjugate so meaning we are coming a little bit inside and that means that the anatomical conjugate is going to be somewhat longer than the obstetrical conjugate because we are going on to the area where it is more prominent. So we are measuring from here back to the sacral promontory. So this diameter now or conjugate is what we are going to refer to as the obstetrical conjugate. Okay, now from the obstetrical conjugate, because we did make mention that the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvic brim has a three of those anterior posterior diameters called conjugates, when we go to the lower border of this symphysis uh, pubis back to the sacral promontory, we're going to have what we call the diagonal conjugate. So if we move from here, going down all the way to the bottom here, we're going to have what we refer to as a diagonal conjugate. Okay, so from the diagonal conjugate, these are the three that we have on the pelvic brim, and we're looking at the anterior posterior diameter. Now, if this woman is going to be standing on the ground, and then we continue the anatomical conjugate from the sacral promontory, all the way down to the ground. If we drew an imaginary line straight to the ground, it will form an angle that is a 60 degree angle. And this 60 degree angle is what we call the angle of pelvic inclination. Okay, so meaning that the pelvis is about 60 degrees from the ground. So that is the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvic brim. Then we are going to have an oblique diameter, which is going to be the second one. So we are going to have oblique diameters, that is moving all the way from the sacro iliac joint to an area called the iliopectineal line so we're moving basically from one end to the opposite direction so you have your pelvic brim there and we're moving from that sacroiliac joint onto the opposite side which is going to be the iliopectineal line so this is going to give us the left oblique so that will be the left oblique the same again can happen you move from the right uh, sacroiliac joint going to the opposite there so you're moving from here to the other side and then you end up with the right oblique diameter okay so those are the oblique diameters on the pelvic brim and then we come to the transverse diameters so the transverse diameters are measured from the furthest part transverse diameters. They are measured from the furthest part of the ilio um, pectineal lines and usually about 13 centimeters or so. The oblique usually are about 12 centimeters. With the transverse you find they are about 13 centimeters. So from the furthest area of the ilio pectineal, I mean, uh, ilio pectineal lines that will give you the transverse uh, diameters. So those are the three diameters that you look at as you look at the pelvic brim. Now we quickly go to look at the uh, cavity, okay? So when we are looking at the cavity, the cavity is basically the area that is in between the pelvic brim and the pelvic outlet. And it has no specific landmarks. So all the diameters from the anterior posterior diameter, the oblique diameters and the transverse diameters are all about 12 centimeters. No specific landmarks for the pelvic cavity. Then we would be looking now at the pelvic outlet. Okay, so when we are looking at the pelvic outlet, it's important to know that we have two types of pelvic outlets. That is, we have an anatomical pelvic outlet and we have an obstetrical pelvic outlet. Okay? Obstetrical pelvic outlet. Now, if we are looking at the anatomical outlet, so the anatomical outlet is basically the bottom part of all the bones plus 
a ligament which we call the sacrotuberous ligament. So you're looking at the bottom part of the ischiotuberosities here and going back all the way to the bottom part of the coccyx there. So the bottom part plus then the sacrotuberous ligament. So that is going to give you the anatomical um, outlet. And the anatomical outlet itself is going to be a little oval. Okay, but when you're looking at the obstetrical uh, outlet, the obstetric outlet is going to is going to be more or less a diamond shaped. And when we're looking at the obstetrical outlet, the landmarks now are going to be a point of articulation for the sacramen, the coccyx, which we are going to call the sacro coccygeal. Okay. which is the sacrococcygeal joint, okay? And then we're going all the way this way to the ischiospines. From the ischiospines, then you will have the lower border of the uh, symphysis pubis. So you have the lower inner border, okay, of the symphysis pubis of the synthesis pubis, and then again you're going to have the sacrotuberous ligament. And the sacrospinous. Okay, so sacrospinous just means that you are going to have ligaments from the sacrum all the way to the ischiospines, because the ischiospines are part of that obstetric um, outlet. So then they also form part of the landmarks. Sacrotuberous, it means that you have ligaments from the sacrum all the way to the ischiotuberosity and the ischium uh, at the bottom end. So these now are going to give you the more diamond kind of shape for that obstetric outlet. So basically that is the pelvic brim, the pelvic cavity and the pelvic outlet and those are the most important landmarks and how you would be able to differentiate them and understand them in that order. Now if you found this particular video interesting and helpful in understanding the pelvic brim, the cavity and the outlet, don't hesitate to drop me comments in the comments section, ask the questions and drop them right there. And also do not forget to follow me on Facebook and subscribe as well to the YouTube channel, which is the Brain Shakers Academy. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.